explain the the um the job of an executive producer that's kind of led into my next question because you always you've, you've always been in control and it seems like that that title suits you well well executive producer man on a project it, it's usually the person that goes get the get the money from the from the record company he has a production company and sometimes depending on who it is it, it, it they have, all have different jobs uh, but usually the produ- production company will bring in the, 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 he'll work with the artists, he'll bring in the songwriters, he'll bring in the, he'll bring in the, uh, the producers, the musicians, and he'll make sure everybody coordinates and everything is working together. That was kind of my, that was, I was kind of my function at that back in the, back in the day. That's, that's my, that's my claim to fame. Okay. That's what mm-hmm. I do best. I don't really, I don't really program drums, but I know, uh, just like other day. One of my guys uh, from one of my companies I'm working with, um, they're thinking about doing a song about about their product. So I called up one of my boys in Vegas, who I know can do a good, fast writer, and this producer said, man, I need a song about this right here. Two days later, I got a song, okay? And I gave him all the particulars. I gave him all the all the, the various points we want to hit. And that's how I, you know, and I, I played it to him on Friday. They was in love with me. They, oh, man, love, that's great, blah, blah. They don't know the artist. They know me. Okay, mm-hmm. but I need to go to. Okay, if they, if they said, "Hey, man, I need I need a slow song or cha cha," I won't go to that guy. I go to somebody else. I go to my boy Will. I go to Willie Z. Willie Z plays saxophone. He plays keyboards. He's an R and B guy. So, depending on what I need uh, as a, as a, for a project, I'll go as an executive producer and bring those people in to make that project happen. It's like an architect. You know, some some people do colonial stuff real well. Some people do modern stuff real well. And so as an architect, you have to know um, what vendors to bring to the project to make it, to make it the best project possible, make it the best project possible. Mm. And you have to get gangster sometime, but I promoted myself not to nowhere near the level that you did, but there were times where it's, you know, it's one in the morning, you have to negotiate with this rapper it, it, and you have to quote unquote get gangster, right? Well, you know what? I learned a long time ago. You try not to get gangster, but sometimes you get a fool. That's you know? the thing. Yeah, you try everything not to get that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Eight, nine different ways, but it just goes right back to that. They don't speak business. They don't speak logic. All they speak yeah. is the street. Okay. And now I got. I, I tried the business kind of my business language. You're not getting them mm-hmm. here, where here as where four thousand blah blah blah. I've tried to be, I've tried to negotiate. I tried to be diplomatic. You don't understand compromise. All you understand is me cussing, telling you get the fuck out of my face and leave me the fuck alone for this shit get real ugly. Oh, okay, I got you, which is the damnedest shit in the world. Okay. Yeah. But these see, but you have to, but a real player has to have them levels to minimize your bullshit. Because sometimes you can get a person on the business level, or you can get them on the on on the on the. Uh, Diplomatic level. You ain't got to go gangster. Nowadays, everybody want to go gangster. As soon as there's a problem, he want to go gangster. That's why you got yeah. some of them bullshit. They, they, don't have, they don't have the, the business savvy or the, the diplomacy. They go straight to gangster. Mm-hmm. So, and, and when you go to gangster, usually fisticuffs or goddamn guns come out and somebody going to jail. See, I've, I've owned a house since I was 20 years old. So when you own shit, you got shit to do. House knows to pay, mm-hmm. car knows to pay. You ain't got time yeah. to sleep in county. Yeah. You ain't got time to go slip in county for three or four weeks waiting on the judge. So nope. gotta get to work, dog. That's four weeks out of work. Right. Not not saying not saying you're a punk by no means. You gotta think past the bullshit. Why are you willing to lose everything you got for somebody who has nothing? Why are you took mm. why are you playing dice with a guy that has no money? Mm. If you go in a dice game, you don't want to some money, you don't want to gonna lose. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of cast miss. I, he respect, yeah. yeah, but both of y'all niggas is in jail. <laughs> got this respect, but both of y'all in the same goddamn cell. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's what happens when you when you uh get a sense of responsibility. Yeah, you realize that it's there's a lot more to it than impressing your homies, okay? Yeah, because I was always older than most of the guys around here. 
I was able to show them things that they, they couldn't see. They probably, a lot of them had never seen before. Hey, man, it ain't worth all that hassle, dude. And first of all, if it's going to be like that, y'all can take that bullshit someplace else. Now, I got to be the gangster, okay? First and foremost, this is my house. I don't mind y'all drinking. I don't mind, but y'all ain't going to be fighting and acting a goddamn fool around here. I'm not going to have it. All right, Lonzo. <clears throat> And I let it go. I don't. I don't harp on it. You know. I still show love on both sides because you know these young cats with testosterone. Testosterone is flying everywhere, man. You mix testosterone with beer, but you lucky. You, you, shit. That's a weapon. That's a. That's a recipe for disaster. Mhm. You um. This is how I see you, and you know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're someone who's given way more to hip hop. Then you've gotten back. Yeah, I can say that. Yeah, yeah. Your roots go deep, dog. Like every, every other week, you're dropping something on me that you know I've I've never heard. I, and we've been doing this for you know two three years now. Yeah. Um, I forget where my screen went, but yeah, Doc, you're right. Um, uh, I got a couple of people that's talking to me about another documentary, and I'm also doing another behind the scenes, fill in the gaps type documentary. I'm talking to my uh, one of my videographers about yesterday. And I explained to him, um, most people don't know the questions to ask me, okay? Um, and it, he said, man, how, how, how come Cube and Dre don't give you the, give you the respect that you, that, that you deserve? I said, when I was doing my thing, they was in kindergarten, they, they was in, in elementary school, man. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, I'm, it, Again, you got to do the numbers. Do the numbers. When, if I'm 19, I'm I'm 12 years older than Cube, right? So if I'm 19, that makes Cube what seven? Yeah, yeah. Huh? That's a huge difference. If I'm 19, if I'm 21. If I'm if I'm 20, and I'm and and I'm doing my thing. If I'm at even to dark at 22. I'm 12 years older than he is. He's in elementary, basically, or he, he just interim. Yeah. He's in the fifth grade. Yep. <clears throat> he's in the fifth grade. All right. Dre is uh, eight years younger than me. So if I'm doing my shit at, I'm 22, he, I'm eight years older than he is. That means he's 13. So when I'm out in the streets, Doing mobiles, rocking the Cream Mary, Alpine Village. They at junior, they in high school, the junior high school, man. They junior high. They junior high school. Mm -hmm. elementary. They don't know what I do. They, you know, um, and I, I was telling something else. You guys, I know this guy. I know that guy. I look. I've been DJing probably longer than most of the DJs and cats know. But here's the difference. I was the first one to have his own residency. In his own club. Think about that. At 22 years old, I owned the Eve After Dark. I was all I was already a, a pretty popular mobile DJ. At 22, I opened the Eve After Dark. I got the Eve After Dark rocking. I was the main jock. Nobody else knew nobody else in the Eve After Dark. I brought mm -hmm. other cats in to give myself a break because I knew I couldn't do it all night long because I had to run the club. But people mm -hmm. were because Lonzo was there. That was that was my 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 my, my Following from Alpine Village, and it was my deal. But again, instead of me playing, just being a nightclub owner or the DJ, I'm the actual owner of the club. I'm paying the rent, light bill, the cashier, security guards. I'm hiring fine cats. This is my establishment. I'm not just a resident. I don't have just a residency here. I own the bi the business. Okay. No, I don't own Eve After Dark the building and people to oh man, you, you don't own Eve After Dark. Jeffy owned it. Yes, he did, but I paid Jeffy rent. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes me a land, that makes me a, a, a business owner. Just because I'm not the land, most people, most business owners don't own the don't own, don't own the property. A lot of people rent the property. Some people own it, but everybody don't own the property. That, that's 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 trying to explain something to a knucklehead who think they know something. I had somebody say, man, you don't own Eve After Dark. Mr. Jeffy did. Yes, he did. I paid him rent. He was my landlord. I was responsible for the maintenance on the building. I was responsible for insurance on the property. I hired and fired all the employees. He didn't give a damn about that. All he cared about was being getting his rent money, which made him a landlord, which made me the proprietor. Ta-da! 
Mm. If he was getting the profits, he would be the proprietor. Okay. So that's the difference in Lazo. Plus, Lazo ran his own clubs on the east side. I did everything on the side of Crenshaw for years. I didn't cross Crenshaw till till uh till 90, 90, 97, 98. Everything I did on everything I did, everything I did was on on the uh, east side of Crenshaw. Eve up to dark, Dudos, Skateland, Alpine Village, all on this side of on the east side of Crenshaw. And like I told him, I said, I didn't have time to go watch nobody else DJ. I'm DJing myself. If they was working and I was working, how are we gonna come to each other's shows? But back in the day, because there was um they had a little, they had um a lot of stuff going on during the week. I got to know people because I'd go to other people's club during the week time, during the week. Me and Sydney Thompson go back forever. Um, me and DJ Red, uh, one of my best friends, Edwin. I met him in in the late eighties, but I never, I, I, I never rented his equipment till I, I didn't meet him till I rented his equipment because I had my own equipment. So it was a lot of it was dependent. I didn't need, I didn't have, well, I didn't need to rent anything. But I didn't, um, I didn't have, I didn't have the interaction with these cats. So a lot of these guys don't don't know me as a DJ. It all depends on how you know me, where you know me from. Mm -hmm. It will determine what you think I am. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> you me as a club owner. Uh huh. If you've been, if, if, I, if I, if you hire me as a DJ, you know me as a DJ. If you bought my records, you know me as a uh, as a uh, grandmaster. You saw me in concert. I'm wrecking crew. You read. Mm -hmm. Look, read read the articles. I'm the Godfather of West Coast hip hop. But that's that Gemini shit. That's that Gemini shit, man. And here's the crazy <laughs> part: some people have never put it all together yet. <laughs> there it is, right? You're like, oh, that's you. No, wait. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, man, I, you're a puzzle, homie. You're a puzzle. You got to put all the pieces together. I got friends I would know forever. Didn't realize the straight out of Compton. After straight out of Compton, they were talking about you. Yeah, because there's no. <laughs> From you, elementary, from elementary to junior high to about the ninth grade, I went by my middle name, which was Eric. Okay. So I it, didn't know that. Yeah, my, my middle name is Eric. Okay. So people call me Eric. So if you call me, if you was in my neighborhood, you call me Eric. Okay. If you went to if we went to elementary school or whatever the case may be, up until I got to send, I think I went to start changing. I changed my name around. Um, Start going by my first name in, I think when I got to eighth grade in Vanguard. And I left, and I left um, when I left uh, St. Albert's and went to Vanguard, I think in the eighth grade is when I started going by Alonzo, okay? Or Alonzo, either one of them. And uh, so if people say, you know Alonzo? No, nah, you know Alonzo, man? You know, uh, oh, Eric? Bam, my family there it is. Me, still call me Eric to this day. My cousin, <laughs> my cousin they don't know nothing but Eric, okay? And I still answer to them. Anybody else, I'll correct. But but again, mm, it's Lonzo. Yeah, because I've had different. Uh, I've, I've it's never been cohesive like that, okay? And I was just I just me and my boy was talking about the other day. I mean, I said you know it's amazing how many people think they know my contribution to West Coast hip hop. They don't know the backstory to West Coast. The, the backstory would led me here. And that's the part I think is uh, I'm I'm going to work focus on with him.